All right, we're back after a little hiatus from Careers and Coffee. Coming right back at you, pleasant <laughs> hand, with our coffee on a Friday. With morning. our coffee, yep. <laughs> How are you doing, Liz? Well, we have not stopped drinking coffee, even though we have stopped. Uh, we ha- we're a little bit of a hiatus on the podcast, but that was because we were doing career fair. We had career fair with, last week. We had what over? We had over thirty employers down at Nubo City Market. Yeah. Uh, what was our final count on job seekers? Well, we had about sixty job seekers come by, but there were a few that didn't stop by our booth. But I, I would say that success with just such a tight market right now, of, you know, there aren't that many people looking for jobs, but there are a lot of people needing people to fill roles. And, you know, it's it's always hard to get in a two hour period people to show up in one place. So especially during pandemic. So I, I was I was proud of how it worked out. And um, everybody's pretty happy. The job seeker feedback was great. They enjoyed it. Um, they felt like they got a lot out of it. Good, good conversations with employers. And you can't really say that on an online experience for the most part. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'd, um, yeah. I would echo that. And uh, also a lot of good feedback on the location. I think uh, being at Nubo City Market, downtown Cedar Rapids, we had a nice afternoon, maybe even a little warm because uh, we were an indoor outdoor career fair. Um, so uh, yeah, it might've got even a little toasty towards, towards the end with the sun coming in, but uh, overall, I think uh, really Good experience, both on both the employer side and job seeker side. Um, and there's some jobs available right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we had a mix of roles, too. So it's like from manufacturing to technology to um, anything and everything in between. It was it was really quite the mix. Um, so uh, our next career fair probably won't be till spring, but uh, it just was really good to get back in the swing of that. Uh, career fair and and get out there and talk with job seekers. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we are going to uh, talk a little bit today about filling out an online job application. Yes. (laughs) So some feedback we got from some job seekers was like they wanted to hand their resume to the employer and the employer was like, yeah, just fill it out online. And that may seem kind of rude, you know, to a job seeker that like put all the effort in like printing out their resume and bringing it. Um, But the reason that that is, is um, a lot of employers are trying to eliminate like any form of bias from their hiring prospects. And so what they need in order to do that is to have like a consistent way that they receive applications. Mm, And the choice for that is online because that is where most people are applying. And so, you know, you're really not seeing too much of mail your resume anymore or drop your resume off. Like that is not something we're seeing anymore in job applications. And so filling out an online job application is a skill that every job seeker right now needs to have. And we know you're not a professional job seeker. There's no such thing. So we just wanted to cover a couple tips on that today in the podcast. Okay, cool. What do you got for us? Okay, so the first thing is, Um, Internet access, obviously, you're going to need internet access to fill out an online job application, but stable internet access is a different thing. So sometimes you're like maybe in a coffee shop and you're on Wi-Fi and it goes in and out. That's really not the best place to fill out a job application. So if if you don't have home access to internet, which some people don't, um, the library is always a good choice. Iowa Workforce Development is another choice. You can go in there, use the computers, fill out online job applications, but you want that stable internet connection so that your time is not wasted because a blip in the internet causes you to lose all of your work. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next thing is just kind of have your resume and cover letter on hand. Um, and when I say in hand, I mean in like an electronic file. <laughs> so. You're going to want either a PDF or a Word document of your of your resume. So, and you want it, um, if you are using someone else's computer, you're going to want to put it on a flash drive or some kind of portable um, drive. Or you can email it to yourself and then pull your email up on that computer. That's another way of doing it. Um, but just having that available to you so that you can easily copy paste um, from one thing to another. Because a lot of times if you're going to apply for a job, you're going to be creating an account on an employer's career site, which is, I know it's annoying, but that is your, that is your best way of connecting with that employer oftentimes. So you're going to be creating that account. 
You're going to be copy and pasting from your resume. Sometimes you're going to be uploading your resume. They're going to ask you for your job history. So just having all that stuff ready to go is just going to make the process go a lot smoother. Um, when I was applying for jobs, what I did was I would take my work history and put it in complete chronological order in a in like a notepad document, which is just like a there's no formatting or anything in a notepad. And I would put it in there so I could just quickly copy paste into fields. Mm -hmm. um, just just so that you are not struggling with like bullet points and all this boring, stupid, like word document stuff. Oh, that's a really good point, because a lot of times, even if you do a resume upload, they still ask you to fill out different fields that might be yeah. on your resume. Yeah, and you have to copy paste over. So good. OK, I like that. So just a regular just text document, plain text document to copy paste. Yeah. And there's some funny like re on Reddit or on Twitter, you'll see job seekers complaining like, why are you asking me to upload my resume? I just gave you all my information. And so, yes, it is. Sure. The struggle is real. You're not alone. It's a super annoying process, um, but the goal is to get a job. And so you're just going to have to suffer through it. <laughs> okay, I got um, one question. Last, yeah, go ahead. One question uh, before we go to that, the next one. Um, mm -hmm. So would you say, uh, as far as a resume goes, do you think trying to get all your work history onto one page is a good idea? Or if you're, you know, your work history is fairly you know, substantial, is it okay for your resume to spill onto a second or third page as well? You know, I don't really know the answer to that question. I think it depends. It depends on the level of the role that you're applying for. So let's sure. say you're applying for an executive position. A two-page resume may not necessarily be a bad thing because they'd show that you're you're ready for that level. Mm -hmm. But if you're just applying, if you're switching careers, perhaps, like you're moving from one career path to another, having a two page resume is just it's just not going to get looked at necessarily because these employers they have and it might not even be an employer it could be a bot that's reading your resume it's just looking for those keywords of the skills that they're looking for or the experience level that they're looking for and if you're going above and beyond that it might almost kick you out sometimes so sure. i prefer i mean i think most uh, most recruiters would ask that you share the most relevant work history with them maybe not every because like how many jobs have we had dan like <laughs> <laughs> may have had 70 <laughs> jobs i don't know how many jobs i've had a lot um i'm not gonna include them all it's not i'm not going back to high school so sure. i i think relevancy is important um skills that relate to the job that you're applying for are important and also just kind of your any of your soft skills if you can bring those to light and what we mean by soft skills is like your your ability to relate to someone else as a human being your empathy your um your friendliness if you can have those come through in your resume and it could just be as as simple as the the objective statement that you have on your resume so like my my goal is to you know find a job in blank because blank you know if you have an objective like that if you can craft it in a way that kind of brings your humanity to light that's going to stand out yeah very good okay cool all right i want to hear what's next on your list there okay so the next step is just commitment <laughs> so, <laughs> okay um, maybe the hardest step right <laughs> the hardest step right we're all distracted like the fact that Dan and I are having this podcast and we're not doing anything else right now is like a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you so, got 30 tabs open on your other screen. I know you uh, do. <laughs> only, you know, only six or seven right now. Right? Six it's, or seven, only, okay. <laughs> it's only 9.49 in the morning. So, um, it's early. Yeah. So commit to 15 minutes, um, 15 to 20 minutes for a job application and just get through one. If you're on Indeed and you're doing like an easy apply, that's 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 a whole different ballgame. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about if you're if you're looking at, let's say you're going to be applying for a job at True North or something, and you're probably going to have to go into their company career page, create an account, and fill out an application. That will get you into their system. And what it does is it it re reduces duplication efforts because if they're interested in you, you're going to have to fill out the application anyway at some point, and then it's then it's kind of irritating for a job seeker. It's like, well, I already gave you my resume. Why do I have to fill this out as well? Mm -hmm. um, doing that first is is going to be helpful to both you and the employer because they can understand 
in a formatted way how you flow into their system. I, so yeah, just commitment. And I, I kind of see it as a little bit of a, a a gatekeeper type of move too, right? Like so so if you're on the employer side, you're thinking, okay, is this person committed to mm -hmm. are they willing to go a little bit above and beyond, even though we might already have the resume? Mm -hmm. Are they willing to go through this next batch of steps to get this job? Like how invested are they in getting this? How committed are they? Yeah. And you might think, well, it's a job seekers market right now. I shouldn't have to do this. Well, in an ideal word, no, world, no, you shouldn't have to go above and beyond to get a job that you're qualified for. But it does help you stand out. And really, at this point, what, what job seekers need is, is a really good fit, right? So you want to find something that's a really good fit for you. And so if you feel like the job is a good fit for you, you should do a little bit extra to get that get considered for that position and then you'll you can work out all the other details in the interview interview process i like it okay uh anything else for the good of the order before we wrap up <laughs> the, the, the good of the, the, the good so, of the coffee <laughs> yeah, the good of the coffee yeah uh just review your application before you hit that submit button um simple things like making sure your name is capitalized if it's in you know a field where your name should be capitalized um, don't be lazy about some of that data entry because that it it shows when someone's reviewing your application like oh they didn't bother to check this out um, making sure your 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 contact information is accurate so your email that you're going to be using is the one that you will be checking <laughs> So that it doesn't, uh, so that you don't accidentally ghost the employer if they want to reach out to you <laughs> and they're reaching out to you on an old email and you're not checking it, then it just, it really is bad for your um, job seeker reputation. So double check before you hit submit. And then, um, you know, we always say this, but it doesn't hurt to say it again. Just check out your online profiles. So what does your Facebook look like to the public? So you can check that out by going to um, Facebook and searching for yourself and maybe logging out. I, I actually, Facebook has a tool in there that will show you like, here's what my profile looks like to other people. Right, yep. That's very good, good tips. And not only Facebook, but you know, all, yeah. all of your social media and LinkedIn. TikTok, um, Instagram, um, everything. everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we need to check all the boxes if you are on um, any of those platforms. So yep. good stuff. Yeah, well, good luck, everyone. Uh, I know it's a tough time right now to to be job seeking because it's because there seems like there are a lot of choices. And if you're not getting a lot of response, you may feel kind of alone. But reach out to us. Let us know if you're having trouble. We'd be happy to help. And um, any topics you want us to cover in careers and coffee, uh, be sure to put those in the comments. All right. Well, thanks, Liz. That was awesome. Talk to you again soon. All right. Bye bye.